Mrs. Lady, you see. Not interested. She's wearing a mink coat, and it costs plenty. I don't care if she's wearing sealskin underwear. You know, Eddie, I think I can prove that Billy the Kid never killed a man in a fair draw. So what? While you're finding out our American history is cockeyed, I find out we haven't paid the rent. We haven't even made a car payment. <laughs> but we're going to with these. Eddie, those books cost $300. Put them down. Will you promise to take this Philly's case no matter what it is? If it's another woman looking for evidence for divorce, I'm not interested. Oh, no? Well, you were very much interested in this case about 10 years ago. Let me see. Maybe I can quote from the newspapers. Simon Lash, promising young attorney, left waiting at the altar by Joyce Kimball. Boss, she's waiting out there, and she looks worried. If Joyce Kimball had nerve enough to come and see me, she isn't worried. She's scared to death. Well, shall I tell the lady to come in, or will I uh, put the books down? You'll see you, Mrs. Marlowe. Hello, Simon. Oh, uh, hello, Joyce. It's been a long time. You've changed. You haven't. You're just as, uh... Alluring. Sit down. You wanted to see me on a business matter? Well, Simon, everyone knows that since you've given up your law practice, you've turned out to be one of the best detectives in the country. Never mind the flattery. You want to get the divorce, and you want me to get the evidence. Is that it? No, it happens that I'm very happily married. Why did you come here? You didn't let me finish. My husband's disappeared. Then go to the Bureau of Missing Persons. I'm sorry I bothered you, Simon. I came to you on a delicate personal matter because, well, I thought you'd understand, but all apparently... Right. Sit down. Tell me all about it. If it's a matter I can handle as a private detective, I'll be glad to. After all, there are certain things I can do better than the police. Well, Jim has been suffering from attacks of amnesia. Amnesia? <laughs> this is the third time he's disappeared. The first time, he was found wandering about Santa Monica in a dazed condition. When the police questioned him, he didn't even know his own name. Fortunately, he had some letters in his pocket. The second time... Never mind the gory details. You want this character back, don't you? Please, do you think it was easy for me coming to you asking for help? Why did you? Well, because you enjoy the reputation of being one of the best detectives in the country. Even though you are considered a bit eccentric. Eccentric? <laughs> Maybe I am. Most fellows, when they get a kick in the uh, pants from the love of their life, usually go on a booze bender. Not me, I'm different. I went on a book then, and I love it. Yes, I know. Everyone says you'd rather dig out a Don't You Believe It on American History and collect a 5,000 retainer on a case. Well, I find I meet a much nicer class of people in books than I do in detective work. After all, my private life is my own. Now to get back to the case, I don't believe in amnesia, and as long as you understand that, I'll find your husband for you, and you can battle it out with him. Now, what was it that was bothering Jim Bonham? What makes you think something was bothering you? Well, nine out of ten times, that amnesia gag is a fake. When a guy gets in trouble and he can't face it, he runs away. And then when trouble catches up with him, why, he doesn't know anything about it. Till they find he's been tapping the till. Tap, tapping the... Oh, uh, unconsciously, of course. What on earth are you talking about? Your uh, husband was vice president of the Sheridan National Bank, wasn't he? Well, that's right, but I can't see this. Well, when a banker disappears with amnesia, it's usually followed by a shortage of funds. Unless there's, um, trouble at home. Jim had no troubles, at home or in his business. We've been very happy together, and we've certainly had no financial worries. Well, I'm glad to hear that, Joyce. In that case, you wouldn't mind giving me a check for $1,000 as a retainer. Not at all. What were some of his habits? We went to the theater, entertained friends, did things together. Always together? He uh, never did anything on his own? No, outside of stopping off occasionally on the way home for a cocktail or two. He didn't drink to excess. Where was this little stopping off place of his? The Sunset Athletic Club. Well, that's enough for a starter. You know, you're a very lucky girl, Joyce. Model husband. It's all too good to be true. Funny, they're usually the men that leave home. You'll do everything you can for me, won't you, Simon? Mrs. Bonneville, I'll have your husband back in your little pink boudoir before you know it. Thank you. Goodbye. Bye.
Eddie. Uh-huh. I want you to bust over to the Sunset Athletic Club and get all the dope you can on this fellow Bonomo. Bonomo, huh? Hey, Eddie. Yeah? Where are you going? Sheridan National Bank. Do you mean to tell me Mr. Springer is Bonneville's boss and his best friend that you don't know where he's disappeared to? I know nothing of the kind. Mr. Bonneville is on vacation. How long has he been gone? About two weeks. That's when his wife said he disappeared. Are you quite sure that Joyce, I mean Mrs. Bonneville, employed you? Quite sure. Oh. Now let's quit stalling around. Is there anything else missing around here besides Bonneville? Nothing. No loose cash or negotiable securities? Oh, don't be ridiculous. Everything is in perfect order. Okay, it's your bank. Mind if I use your telephone? I'm fresh out of nickels. Hello. Eddie? Oh, hello, boss. Say, they got a letter from that bunny old guy. And I made a deal with the mail clerk. I gave him a hot tip on a horse at 15 to 1. And they let me look at the return address. Here it is. This is James Baker. 9623 Wilshire Boulevard. Okay, got it. Anything else? Oh, yeah. You know the horse I gave him at 15 to 1? <laughs> it didn't come in a quarter after 7. <laughs> Must come over and use my phone sometime. Open up. Who is it? Oh. Don't yell. I'm looking for a Mr. James Baker. He isn't here. Where is he? I don't know. He went away on a business trip. How long has he been gone? A couple of days. You're not really married to Mr. Baker, are you? Yes, son. I don't know what you mean. I represent Mrs. Bonneville. Now, do you know what I mean? Why, no, I, I've never You knew heard. that Jim Baker was Jim Bonneville, didn't you? Why, no, I... Now, wait I, a minute. The next thing you'll be telling me, you didn't know that Mr. Bonneville was married. What is your real name? Evelyn Price. You're a nice girl, Evelyn. Why don't you get smart? Maybe I can help you. How long is it since you've seen Mr. Bonneville? I told you, a couple of days. Did he say when he'd be back? No. Uh, did he ever tell you anything about his private business? No, he never told me anything, except about his minks. He sort of joked about that, said he was raising a mink coat for me. <laughs> Don't tell me he was raising minks. Oh, he didn't raise them himself. Somebody else did that for him. But he owned them. What if you'd go through his papers and things? I'd like to get a lead on this mink business. I wouldn't mind, except he never brought anything here. Are you sure? Look, I'm as anxious to find Jim as you are, mister. Especially since I have somewhat of a problem. What is that? Matter of $125 rent. You broke? Exactly. I have $3.35 left. Uh, here's $10. I'll help you keep the wolf away from the door for a couple of days. Thanks. You're a strange cop. Stick around. I can't. I've got to slap this check for $1,000 in the lady's face. $1,000? What did she do to you? She lied to me. J.B. James Baker, James Bonneville. How coincidental. Hello, Joyce. 
I just talked to your office. They said you were on your way over here. Where were you last night? Well, right here. I didn't leave the house. That's funny. I telephoned several times and got no answer. Well, well, I, I, I was so nervous, I knew I wouldn't sleep, so I took some sleeping pills. I woke up about an hour ago. Have you found out anything? Yeah. I found out you lied to me yesterday. I told you I didn't handle divorce cases, didn't I? So then you switched to the amnesia routine. I didn't believe it, but I thought there might be another angle, but there wasn't. So here's your check back. I don't like divorce money. It's dirty. But I don't understand. Oh, stop playing on, you know. Two hours after I started to work on this case, I found Jim Bonneville's love nest. What are you talking about? You know darn well what I'm talking about. There's a girl living in an apartment over on Wilshire Boulevard under the name of Mrs. James Baker. Jim Bonneville. J.B. Even the initials fit. What's her real name? You can get that from any shyster detective for one-tenth of what you're paying me. I don't wash other people's dirty linen. I don't believe it. I've lived with James Bonnewell for 10 years, and you get to know a person in that time. Besides, what could any other woman give him that I can't? I don't know. You're the best judge of that. Hello? Yes? What? Well, very well, I'll hold on. It's long distance. Palmdale. Maybe they found Jim. Hello? Yes, this is Mrs. Bonnewell. What? You found him? Oh, thank heaven. What? Oh, no, Simon. No. <laughs> Hello. Who is this? <laughs> this is Simon Lash. I've been working on this case. Well, this is Sheriff Rucker. Hey, that's Bonnewell, all right. His head was blown off with a shotgun. Now, there's not much left to look at. Well, it could be suicide. And it might be murder. What is it? Castleman's Mink Ranch. One and a half miles northeast of Palmdale. <laughs> All right, I've got it. We'll be up there as fast as we can. I'm oh, sorry, honey. Sorry about everything. Here, take this. Thanks. You'll have to pull yourself together and get dressed. Very long. Simon, I lied to you yesterday. Maybe you didn't. Nevertheless, it's turning out to be the kind of a case I like. Oh, it wasn't that. It was about Jim having no financial worries. He lost all his money in the stock market. I guess that's why he suffered the amnesia attack. Why didn't you tell me this before? It was my pride, I guess. I. I didn't want you to think we were so poor. Where did you get the thousand dollars you gave me? That was my own money, and just about the last of it, too. You must have left a pretty good-sized insurance policy. I wouldn't know about that. Now, don't start feeling sorry for yourself. You still have a lot to be thankful for. You feel up to a quick trip? Anything you say. Better take your sleeping tablets. You might catch a nap. It's a long way to, uh... We're on the way up from the city. Where's Castleman? What's the matter with you, Joe? I was just thinking. Them little minks are devils. Women sigh over them and men die over them. They bring a lot of misery into the world. Now, if you want something really serious to think about, Joe, listen to this. It's a little true story I just dug up about a smart lawyer and the woman he loved. They planned on getting married, but she marries big money instead. Nothing unusual about that. No, but then the lawyer gives up his practice and turns detective. And the banker she marries disappears. And I suppose the banker was insured for plenty, huh? Naturally. So the wife hires her former lover, now the detective, to find her husband. But we find him instead, up there with his head blown plain off. I telephone the wife, and her detective boyfriend just happens to be there. Now the two of them are on their way up here to identify the body. And she gets his dough and the insurance money as well. And they live happy ever after, huh? Not if I can prove what I think. Come on, let's go.
You the sheriff? Yes. You're Simon Lance, I suppose. That's right. Mrs. Barnwell. How do you do? Where's the... Uh... On the porch. Come along, I'll show you. This may be pretty painful to you, Mrs. Barnwell. It's, it's not a very pretty sight. Who found it? I did. Well, this is Castleman. Ben, do you know Mrs. Barnwell? No. This is Mr. Lash. Howdy. He's a private Howdy. detective. Detective? What for? It's a plain case of suicide. Yeah? This is purely for identification purposes only, Mrs. Barnwell. Of course, there, there isn't much to see, just his clothes, the papers we found on him. That darn windmill. It's been screeching like that ever since. Is that the shotgun that? Uh... Yep. The gun was right by him on the floor. The shoe was off. He uh, pressed the trigger down with his toe. He's been mopping around like that ever since he got here. When did he get here? Last week. I can't understand what he's worried about. Business was fine. Mrs. Barnwell, did you know of your husband's interest in this place? This is the first I've heard of it. That's funny considering he's been coming up here for the past year. He's a fine man. We never had any trouble. I can't imagine why he should kill himself. Neither can I. Where were you? I was up in the North Pens when the windmill started screeching. Then I heard a shot. How many shots were fired? One. Only one? Yeah. Is there anything else? Well, there's a few more things I've got to clear up, but I'll have to get back to my office. Suppose we adjourn to Palmdale. All right. Understand it. Understand what? Jim owning a mink ranch. Why, he's the last man in the world I'd expect to go in for something like that. His interests were always, well, big business, not farming. What was the price tag on that coat you're wearing? Four thousand dollars. There you have it. Minks multiply fast, and so do the profits. It's big business, all right. Excuse me, I have to make a phone call. Operator. Operator, I want Hollywood, California. Hempstead 3951. Thank you. Hello. Hello. Where's Lice? He went into the hotel for a minute. Eddie? What'd you find out about the girl? Where'd she go? She broke from the starting gate about an hour ago. But nobody knows what race she's in. What? In plain English, she moved out. All right, that'll do for the time being. Here's what I want you to do. I want you to get a line on Vincent Springer, president of the Sheridan National Bank. Find out all you can about him. Yeah, Eddie, see what price you can get on that Evelyn filly in the third. Thanks. I want to talk to you alone. Shoot. Sure. What do you know about Bonnewell? Uh-uh. I'm looking for information, not giving it. Well, you can answer a few simple questions, can't you? You can ask. How did Bonnewell get along with his wife? Why don't you ask her? She was living with him, I wasn't. Thanks, you're a big help. My job is to keep the confidence of the client. Mrs. Bonnewell is my client. Are you sure that's all? What do you think? You see, I was under the impression that you and Mrs. Bonnewell were, well, old friends. We were? So what? Nothing yet. Maybe you mind? Do you mind if I ask a question? No, go ahead. You said back at the mink farm you thought it was suicide. Well, I didn't. Castleman did. What did you think it was? Murder. Why? Castleman was wrong. There were two shots fired. It was buckshot in the floor and buckshot in the ceiling. And a man who's already given himself a load of buckshot standing couldn't very well give himself another one after he was down, could he? Not bad, Hawkshaw. You're not a bad detective yourself. 
But you know, you're putting yourself on the spot, though. Why? Why do you say that? Well, after all, you and Mrs. Barnwell, and I understand there's some insurance money. Are you crazy? At least you might give me credit for a little sense. I do a better job than that. Why didn't you? Hey, you know something? I don't think you're kidding. I'm not. Where were you and Mrs. Barnwell when it happened? Or is that a professional secret? You talked her on the telephone, you ought to know. I talked to somebody on the telephone who said she was Mrs. Barnwell. I can vouch for it. I was there. And who's going to vouch for you? That's for me. I'll see if it is. Hello? Yeah. Long distance. Hello? Listen, boss. The results ain't in yet on the Chestnut Philly. Oh, talk English, you little... Now, wait a minute, boys. Take it easy. I got some news on that Springer guy. He ain't in town. What? No, nobody knows. He didn't say a word. Just took a powder. Funny, ain't it? Yeah, you're killing me. Yeah. Excuse me. Okay, Judy, let's have it. Okay, thanks. So, Vincent Springer's disappeared. Nice going, Hawkshaw. Had the operator listening on the phone, huh? Well, you see, uh, Julie and I are sort of old pals, like uh, like you and Mrs. Bonawa. Or Romeo and Juliet. Yeah. Well, do you want me for anything else? Well, I wish you'd stick around. Am I under arrest? If you put it that way, there's nothing I could really hold you on yet. You're darn right there isn't. Well, so long, Hawkshaw. I've got business in L.A. I may be seeing you. I've got a little business there myself. Goodbye. Bye. See the register? Can't. Why not? Sheriff took it. Who was the woman that used to come up here with Mr. Barnum? Can't tell you. Sheriff's orders. Now, can you tell me? Mrs. Barnywell. Give me that dough. Keep your breeches on. She didn't look like a missus to me, if you know what I mean. She was a flashy brunette. And they didn't act married, even though we signed Mr. and Mrs. If you know what I mean. your husband, the less I like him. Please, Simon. You know what I found out in the hotel? Another girl. Boy, am I tired. Where have you been? Trailing that price for you all night. What did you find out? Well, she checked out of her apartment yesterday morning and went downtown to a pawn shop. Never mind about that. Where is she now? Well, the last I saw of her, she was making a down payment of a week's rent at a room and board joint. Uh, here's her address. Look, boss, can I have the rest of the day off? I'm making good with the tomato over there, and her old man is All training right, some horses. go ahead, go ahead. Fine, thanks. I'll see you later.
come in. Jim Bonnewell's dead, and I'd like to forget. The police won't let you forget. He was murdered. Were you in love with him? No, I wasn't in love with him. I was grateful. He was good to me. Money? It wasn't exactly that. Have you ever been to dance land? Drunks, middle-aged men sneaky a night out, riffraff, anybody who had the price of a dance. They all think it includes the right to Paul over you. Is that where you met him? I'll admit he was drunk the first night he came in. The next time he was sober, and he took me to a nightclub and treated me like a lady. forwarding address. But how did you find me? Eddie, my assistant, made a deal with the Sherman Oaks Employment Agency. Someone else must have made the same deal. You can't stay here any longer. But I gave all I had in advance for this room. All right, here you are. Oh, I can't let you do that. I already know. Now, don't be a fool. Here's what I want you to do. I want you to go down to the Union Station, go in the ladies' room, go out another door. Grab a taxi cab and go to a motel or any place you can find. You can't stay here any longer. All right. And as soon as you get located, telephone me. Some guy said he was the sheriff. He said his name was uh, Tucker or Mucker or Sucker or something like that. I don't know. He said he'd call back later. That's good. Now, what about Mrs. Bonneville's alibi? Well, she stayed in the house until 10 o'clock yesterday morning. Then she left with a terrible-looking person. That was me. Uh, huh? What I want to know about is the night before. Now, wait a minute. I only got this from the guy next door. He used to bet on the dogs. I, I switched them over to the horses. <laughs> That's all the dope he had. Now, if you want any more, how are you going to get it? What about Mrs. Bonneville's maid? Uh, what? Oh, not her. She's a sour puss old maid that hasn't got any weaknesses. She's deaf on drinking, smoking, and gambling. <laughs> I don't know what I'd do with her unless you want me to make love to her. Why well, not? Uh, what? Business before pleasure. Oh, boss, now, wait a minute. Not that. Come on, get going. Now, wait a minute. I'm not going to do that. Uh, oh, this is getting to be terrible. Just a little bump. Ow! <laughs> Who did it, you know? Well, I was going to ask you that. I came in here about ten minutes ago, and there you were, out cold. Mm. Is Eddie back? No. So you don't know who tapped you on the head? No. The doorbell rang, and I answered it. Lightning hit. And... Hey, maybe it was you. Well, maybe it wasn't that. Oh, ouch. Lay off, will you? <laughs> You kill me, Lance. I never saw a man so even-tempered. Always mad. I'll cut the rule back. What do you want? Information. And I think it's about time you talked. And don't give me that line about protecting the confidence of a client because you've already stretched it just a little too far. Oh, you think so? Yes. Well, watch me stretch it a little further. 
I guess I made a mistake in letting you leave the county. But I've been talking to the local cops, and I think they'd take a hand if I nudged them just a little. Look, Rucker, I don't scare. If you want to ask some questions, go ahead. I won't promise you any answers. All right, then I'll tell you. I got the coroner's report, and Bonnemo was killed between 8 and 9 o'clock yesterday morning. And Mrs. Bonnemo didn't leave the house till after 10. Thanks for telling me, but I'm going to check it anyway. What about this fellow, Vincent Springer? I understand he left his bank the day before and hasn't been seen since. Now, where does he fit into this? He was Bonnemo's boss. I know that. And I also know about the love nest on Wilshire Boulevard. Oh. Been snooping, huh? A little, this afternoon. But the bird flew the coop and didn't leave her forwarding address. Tried to break her apartments at Fred and Vermont. Oh, your generosity overwhelms me. What's the catch? There isn't any catch. I'm just swapping this information for some that you might give me about the brunette that went to Palmdale with Bonnemo. Sure, why not? You'll be reading about it in the papers anyway. She drove off in Bonnewell's car, had a flat in Newhall. A garage man there fixed it, and the car hasn't been seen since. Did you put in an alarm? It's gone out on the air and in the newspapers. Now, look, how about you telling me something? Look, Rucker, why don't you go back to your boots and saddles? The traffic's getting a little heavy for you around here. attention to this woman. Hey, you didn't tell me about her. Brother, this Bonneville certainly played the field. His wife was a blonde, the price girl a redhead, and now this brunette. Hey, wait a minute. Maybe this brunette's the answer to the whole thing, since she knew Bonneville well enough to go up the mink farm with him. Uh-huh. Eddie, I think we better find this woman. But how? The whole police force is looking for her. Well, they didn't know where to look. Maybe Bonneville had another love nest we didn't know anything about. He had more nests than a traveling seagull. I think I'd better have another talk with Mrs. Bonneville. Hello. Who? Just a second. The chest in Philly, Evelyn Price. All right, I'll take it. Hello? Mr. Lash, I'm in a motel in Ventura. Call me back later. But I'm frightened. I'm afraid to stay here. I'm sorry. I'm busy and I have to go out. <coughs> Women, trouble. And here I go heading for more. Selling beauty cream, which shouldn't interest you. Oh, Simon, I'm so glad you're here. What's up? Sheriff Rucker just telephoned. Castleman, the mink man, was murdered last night. What do you think? Castleman must have known who murdered your husband. That's why he said he heard only one shot, making it look like suicide, when all the time he knew it was murder. But why? Because he tried to blackmail the man who did it, and it backfired on him. Rest in peace, Castleman. Simon, all this frightens me. I... Joyce, you knew about the redhead on Wilshire Boulevard. Did you know about the brunette? What brunette? The one who went up to Palmdale with your husband and drove away in his car. No, I didn't know about her. Who was she? I don't know. Yes, you do. You've got to tell the truth. It's important. It can't be. It's, it's ridiculous. I... Who is it? Vincent Springer's fiance, Drusilla Denham, is a brunette. But she can't be the woman. Why, I saw her only the other day. That was before your husband... Yes, it was last week. I stopped in to talk to Vincent about Jim, and she was there. You know where she lives? Right here in Beverly Hills. Get her on the telephone. Hello, Emily. This is Mrs. Bonnewell. Will you tell Miss Denham I'd like to talk to her? What? No, there's no message. Thank you. She isn't home. She hasn't been home for two days. The maid said she went to Palm Springs. And Springer's disappeared. I wonder if he went to Palm Springs, too. Oh, it's fantastic. Not Vincent. Why not? I want the truth. I must have it. I've told you. No, you haven't. 
Was Bonomo robbing the bank? I don't know. He, he'd lost a lot of money. What about the amnesia? Well, he did disappear, and he told me he'd lost his mind, but I'd smell perfume on his clothes. What about Drusilla? Oh, I never dreamed that she and Jim... Why, she and Vincent were to be married. Yeah, then Bonomo moved in on her. And Springer, who knew that Bonomo was robbing the bank, thought this added insult to injury. Oh, I won't believe it. I can't. I'll believe anything. But I've got to have proof first. So long. Where are you going? I'm going to my apartment first, and then I'm going to pick up the brunette. I'm Lieutenant Hayden. This is Sergeant Whipple. I. What can I do for you? Well? You paid her a visit yesterday. I did? As a special favor to an old friend of ours, Sheriff Rucker, we've been telling you. Oh, you have, huh? Well, he's smarter than I thought he was. I'm awfully sorry about this Price girl. Want to come down to headquarters and talk about it? You got a warrant? Yes, but I wasn't going to use it unless I had to. Go ahead, use it. You'll get yourself a suit for false arrest. After all, I am a licensed private detective, and I haven't done anything for which you could arrest me. I know, but Sheriff told me that... All right, get him on the telephone. I'll be glad to talk to him. Operator, long distance. I want to talk to Sheriff Rucker up in Palmdale. Have you got anything on the brunette yet? Yeah, she ditched her car in Pasadena and bought herself a maroon Cadillac. And then? And looks like she dug a hole in the Mojave Desert and drove herself and her car into the hole. Mm. Hey, Lash, where are you? Come on, Car? Yeah, there they are. Is it ready for a trip? I just gassed it up. I'll call you as soon as I can. Wait a minute. Where are you going? After the brunette. Look, boss, you've always been clean with the law. What do you want to do this for? Eddie, you don't understand. But I do understand. It's this Bonnie Well dame that's got you woozy, and I'm not going to let you do Eddie, it. Eddie, I... Boss, I'm not going to let that dame make any sucker out of you. I'm sorry, Eddie. drive through the desert. How was it yesterday? Windier. wonder how my sister made out. She drove through here on her way to Mojave. Shall I take your oil and water? Maybe she stopped here. Swell looking blonde, uh, driving a maroon Cadillac. 
How about your tires? I'll check them. You would have noticed, my sister. Look, mister, we get the newspapers even out here. You a cop? That's right. You were looking for that blonde. Well, I tell you, she wasn't driving a maroon Cadillac. It was a black car. And it wasn't yesterday, it was today. Exactly an hour and ten minutes ago. And our local cops know all about it. I wouldn't be surprised if they get it before you do. Thanks. Is a blonde driving a black Buick drive through here with a California license? No, no, we're taking a nap. Oh, hurry up, will you please? Oh, oh, everybody's in a hurry. Never saw the likes of it. Nobody wants to stop and talk. You're as bad as that fellow was in here this morning. I'll be glad to talk to you if it'll make you happy. What do you want to talk about? Well, you don't have to jump down my throat. You're worse than that Springer fella. Then that... Who? The fellow was in here this morning. The one I told you about. I saw his name on the registration. Vincent Springer? Yeah, do you know him? Which way'd he go? I don't know. He used my phone for a long-distance call to me, sir. Heard him say something about uh, he'd be a little late. Thanks. Uh...
can I do for you? Did you tell me where the telephone company is located around here? Why? Do I have to tell you? Well, no, no, but I'd get to know anyway. I know practically everything that goes on around here. Well, then maybe you could tell me about a long-distance telephone call from Kingman, Arizona, to someone around here. Mm -hmm. Well, maybe I can. Uh, what do you want to know about it? Who got the call? Oh, who got the call? I get it. Hey, what did you want to know? Look, if this is a... Whoa, now, wait a minute. No, I'm just trying to help you, that's all. Now, suppose you explain to me just exactly what are you driving at? All right, I'll tell you, but keep it under your hat. I'm a detective. And it's important I contact this man as soon as possible. Oh, you going to arrest him? That's right. Well, then I've got to tell you, neighbor, that my name is Jeff Bailey. It just so happens that I'm the town marshal around here. And any arrests that are made, I make them. Uh, it's a fee office. I see. How much do you charge for arrests? Five dollars. I just gave you ten. Oh, that was just for information. Yeah, information I didn't get yet. Oh, oh, oh no, that's... No, you didn't get it yet, no. You're doing all right. Yeah. I know who he is and I know where he is. He telephoned to King Connors this morning and just went through town about, well, just a few hours ago on his way to the castle. How do you know all this? Well, I told you that I know practically everything goes on around here. It's my business. Uh, should we take your car? All right, let's go. Yeah. Fantastic. Right out here in the middle of nowhere. Hey, you know, there's liable to be some fireworks up there. Have you got any artillery? Yeah, in the compartment. Oh. That's a nice looking gun, huh? Nice balance. 38 and a 45 frame. Yeah. Lots of power. Well, we're armed. Let's go. Money at the gate. Yeah, Jeff Bailey and some stranger just passed through here a minute ago. Okay, Marty. He says he is. Oh. Welcome to Connor's castle, Mr. Detective. Won't you come in and stay a little while? Nice work. Family affair, huh? Oh, sure. I do business with Uncle King, same as with everybody else. Where's this guest of yours? Uh, uh, he's a little bit bashful. He won't come out. Oh, he won't, eh? Uh, well, then let's go in and talk with him. Come on, Mr. Detective. The Duke must like you, or he wouldn't have missed. But I wouldn't give him another shot if I were you. <laughs> nice place you have here. Now you shut up, Uncle King. You talk too much. 
This protection I brought you here is going to cost you money. Uh, now, listen, Jeff. I ain't making much on this deal. Maybe a couple of hundred. Then you're getting gypped. Your customer's a banker, ain't he? That's right. And he's loaded with dough. Yeah, you hear what the guy says? Well, you ought to get at least ten grand. Uh, uh, that right? That's right. Uh, ten? I can't even get five. No? Well, then you better have another talk with him, because five is my cut or I don't play. Uh, now, listen. Listen to reason, will you? You dirty crook. I'm not a crook. Don't you dare. Uh, uh, well, well, a couple of buzzards fighting over a rabbit they haven't even killed. Yeah, and you're the rabbit. And it wouldn't take very much to kill you. Well, come on, Uncle King. Let's put this guy in cold storage and tend to our other business. Jameses, or the real one wasn't shot by the Ford brothers in St. Joe, Missouri. Because it says right here, Jesse James robbed a bank in Texas the day before. Hey, listen, Uncle King, we better have them walls padded, because he's liable to hurt himself before we get a chance to find out what he's worth. Uh, I hope he's worth more than that other chip. Huh? What's the matter? The banker let you down? No, he just didn't bring any money, that's all. Well, maybe his girlfriend's bringing it. Yeah? Uh, what do you know about a girlfriend? Oh, hasn't she phoned yet? I thought maybe she might have. <laughs> I guess I was scared and she took to the back roads. That's why I got here first. He's a nice fellow to have around. He knows all the answers. Now, you just hold him right here, Uncle King. I'll get back into town. I'll have one of the boys drive me back, but of course, I don't want anybody to see his car around. <laughs> all right, Jeff. You run right along. Take care of it. How much do you think your bank is worth about? Oh, I don't know. What would you say? Uh, thousand dollars, uh, maybe? Thousand? It's an awful lot of money. <laughs> Most I could raise at a forced sale would be a couple hundred bucks. Things are getting tough. Getting so a man can't make an honest living. What's the matter? Is the banker unreasonable? Yeah. Most we can get is five thousand. Say, five thousand dollars is a lot of money. Hey, what does he get for that? Uh, don't you get the layout? Fellas like to come here for vacation, a quiet vacation, and stay here until things are safe. Yeah, yeah, I get it. Until the heat's off. Nice and cozy. Your nephew's the lawn, even if he wasn't. You could see them coming from a long way off. That's right. And we have a nice back door over the mountain. Make yourself comfortable. Thanks.
I'll take care of her. for King Connors, Hollywood, California, Hempstead 3951. Hello. Hello. Hello, Eddie. Listen carefully, I'm in the jam. I'm at a place just outside of Mesa, King Connors Ranch. Now, here's what I want you to do. I want you to call Gallup, the state police. I think I can hold out for an hour or two, I hope. Listen, Eddie. Hi. Eddie. Cut the wire. Hello, Joe. Well, Joyce, here we are at last. On a stack of dynamite. Oh, it's fantastic, Simon. How I got here, I mean. I talked to Vincent Springer's butler, and with the help of a little bride, I found out he'd made a mysterious long-distance telephone call to this number just before he disappeared. So, I called the number and... And so you decided to come up here and investigate for yourself, huh? Mm-hmm. Why didn't you call the police or tell me? Well, you were gone and I knew the police were looking for you. I was so confused. I didn't know what to do. Oh, I'm so glad you're here, Simon. Take it easy, baby. You still love me, don't you? Three murders were enough, Joyce. I object to being a fourth. What are you talking about? You know what I'm talking about. You didn't fool me for a minute coming out of that store in Lancaster. You recognize me? Who could ever forget that walk of yours, Drusilla? <laughs> Drusilla's in South America. I checked. It was all too patchy wearing that brunette wig and going up to Palmdale with Bonneville and parading all over the place for everybody to see you. And then you disappeared. And the next time you showed up, you were driving a maroon Cadillac. So the cops start running around in circles and get nowhere. Why? Because you took off that brunette wig and became a blonde. And instead of driving a maroon Cadillac, you drove a black Buick. I underestimated you, Simon. Oh, no, you overestimated me. When you hired me, you thought I'd go barking down those phony trails you set up for me. And the bloodhounds would do the same thing while you remained on the main one, the Sheridan National Bank. But I was too dumb for that. I figured if a guy was working in a bank and it was monkey business, he was robbing that bank. Joyce! Joyce! Are you all right? Why didn't you answer? He's in a remarkably good voice for a dead man. What do you mean? Who do you think it is? Your dear departed husband. You didn't think for a minute I thought it was Vincent Springer, did you? Jim! Jim! All right, Lash. I'll make a deal with you. You send Joyce down, you stay up there. Then we'll pull out. Don't go on my account. Stick around. I like your company. Don't be a fool. Nobody's going to touch you. I'm paying Connors. And after we've gone... What's your hurry? Don't you like it here? We know you made that phone call, and you're just stalling for the police. But you're wasting your time. Jeff will hit him off in Mesa. Maybe, maybe not. I'll play it this way. Well, the devil you will. 
We'll blast you out of that tower. Both of us, Barnabas. At least we'll be together. Charming fellow, your husband. You're still jealous of him, aren't you? After all these years. Why should I be? Because you're still in love with me. I could see it in your eyes that day I went to see you. That wasn't love, baby. I was trying to remember who you were. I hold on to my men. Look at Jim. That redhead girl, the Price girl. You thought she was Jim, didn't you? No, I knew she was Springer's. He was using Barnabas' name. That's why she was killed. So she couldn't identify any pictures that might appear in the papers. Pretty smart, aren't you? You got it all figured out. Yeah, Barnabas knew about Springer. And he held it over him. But robbing the bank was just a little too much for Vincent. So he went up to Palmdale and had his head blown off. A messy job it was, too. You did a much neater job on that poor Evelyn Price girl. I didn't do that. I didn't kill anybody. Believe me, Simon, it was Jim. I was only trying to help him and... Oh, so you hang out of your men, huh, Joyce? Well, Barnabas running out on you. Leaving you to take it alone. I don't believe it. Get out. Yeah! before the police get here. You still got that 5,000? Yeah. Well, you better hang on to it, because you're going to need a smart lawyer to get you out of this. That's number four, Barnabas. I'm coming in. you care, it killed your wife. You've got one left. The police will be here in a few minutes. Think it over. 